Hello everyone, I'm Shitaj Wag. I'm a theoretical biologist at Los Alamos National Lab. And today I'll be talking about our work on predicting optimal combinations of broadly neutralizing antibodies for prevention and therapy of HIV-1 clade C infection. Passive transfer of broadly neutralizing antibodies is being, or BNABs, is being pursued to treat and prevent HIV-1 infections. Preclinical animal studies have shown great promise and the first human clinical trials are underway. To contend with the population level and within host viral diversity of HIV strains, combinations of BNABs will be needed, uh, analogous to combinations of antiretroviral drugs. The key question which I want to address uh, from our work is how many and which BNABs to use for maximal clinical success. To address this question, we experimentally characterized 15 of the best performing BNABs uh, against a panel of 200 clade C viruses from Southern Africa. This work is, uh, was just published in PLOS Pathogens and is in press. We then developed a, a mathematical model called Bliss Hill model to accurately predict neutralization by combinations given data on individual antibodies. We used this modeling to predict the neutralization titers of more than 1,600 combinations of 2, 3, and 4 BNABs. We used several metrics in addition to breadth and potency of the antibody combinations to evaluate the performance of uh, these antibody combinations to arrive at the best possible combinations. Let me start by focusing on panel 1, uh, where I introduced the Bliss Hill model, or BH model. BH model gives very accurate predictions for IC50 or IC80 titers uh, for combinations using a neutralization data for individual BNABs. We have tested the predictions of this modeling on two independent data sets. On the left is the clade C panel, which is the subject of this study, as well as a previous panel, which has more extensive combination data. Uh, this is from Kong et al. Uh, 2014 paper. Uh, which had 22 antibody combinations of 2, 3, and 4 BNABs tested against 125 viruses from, uh, from a global panel. We, on the y-axis are the predicted IC80 titers for combination, and on the x-axis are the observed IC80 titers in both these panels. And we see very, very good agreement. This model is, can be derived from the principles of mass action kinetics, but uh, intuitively, it is based on two simple assumptions. First is that the single antibody neutralization curves follow what are known as Hill curves, which look like the sigmoidal curves shown in this figure. These can be parameterized by two parameters, the IC50 of the single antibody against a given virus, and a parameter called M, which is the slope or Hill coefficient. This parameter can be determined using IC80 and IC50 titers for single antibody against a given virus. And it determines how steeply these neutralization curves rise from 50% neutralization to 80% neutralization. In this figure, the red curves have lower slopes and blue curves have higher slopes. The second assumption we make uh, in the BH model is that the antibodies' actions combine using what is known as bliss independence. This principle is, says that antibodies act independently of each other, even in combination, and virus particles in an in vitro assay, which are missed by combination, are the ones which are missed by each antibody in the combination. This uh, principle can be formulated using this equation shown here. The main advantage of BH model is that it can predict full neutralization curves for combinations of antibodies using single BNAB IC50 and IC80 titers. The prediction of the full uh, neutralization curves allows for, uh, allows for prediction of not only IC50 or IC80 titers of combination, but also other relevant properties, such as uh, maximum percent inhibition at a given concentration, shown in this figure here. Here again, we have bliss predicted maximum inhibition on the y-axis and observed maximum inhibition on the x-axis 
from the Kong et al. panel with the different antibody combinations shown in different colors and indicated by the number of antibodies in each combination. Here again, we find very good agreement between predicted and observed data. In this panel, I'm showing the neutralization uh, data that we generated for this Clade C panel for, uh, for the single antibodies. This neutralization data can be represented as either breadth potency curves shown in this figure here, where on the y-axis we measure the cumulative viral coverage at a given IC80 titer shown on the x-axis. This data can also be represented as heat maps where viruses are indicated on the rows and antibodies on the columns. The color of each cell indicates how potently a given antibody neutralizes a given virus. Redder hues indicate more potent neutralization and lighter hues indicate more, uh, less potent neutralization. And blue indicates IC80 titers above detection threshold. By looking at the heat map, we can see that antibodies which target the same epitopes uh, indicated here uh, show the, uh, similar neutralization profiles. Moreover, we find that V2 and V3 antibodies are the most potent, but tend to miss around 30 to 40% viruses of this panel, whereas CD4 binding site and MPER are broader and uh, have uh, impressive coverage. By looking at the profiles, we see that uh, the V2 antibodies and V3 antibodies show some level of complementarity in their profiles. There are viruses which are potently neutralized by one class of BNABs and missed by the other, and vice versa. This suggests that combining V2 and V3 might give a broader and potent combination. However, they, uh, this type of combination would cover uh, most viruses with only one antibody active, which is something I will discuss later. The best-in-class antibodies are uh, indicated by these gray boxes here. They were CAP256VRC26.25 for V2 antibodies, 101074V for V3 antibodies, and uh, VRC07 523LS for the CD4 binding site antibodies. 1008 was the only MPAR antibody that we had. So given this panel, we next sought out what would be the best antibody, uh, two, three, and four antibody combinations for this panel. To do this, we used uh, the Bliss Hill model or BH model that we developed to predict the IC80 and uh, IC80 titers for all uh, the 1,600 possible two, three, and four BNAB combinations for this panel. Just to set the stage, uh, if we were to pursue this uh, endeavor experimentally, it would have taken 165 man years and $3.2 million in reagents. And this really highlights the impact of our computational strategy. The prediction for IC80 titers for all these combinations are shown uh, as the breadth potency curves for two, three, and four BNAB combinations with different colors indicating different types of combinations. So for example, a red curve in the leftmost panel shows uh, a V2 and V3 antibody combination. Darker curves indicate the combinations which were the best amongst the class of antibody combinations targeted by the, uh, BNABs targeting same epitopes. And these are also highlighted here. This large-scale prediction of uh, IC80 titers for all possible combinations allowed a systematic and unbiased comparison to identify what were the best two, three, and four BNAB combinations. For the best two BNAB combinations, we found that the CAP256 plus VRCO7 523LS showed uh, the best performance. This is a this is indicated by the yellow curve in this breadth potency plot here. For the best three antibody combination, we would add a V3 antibody to the uh, best two combination, and that would be 10, 10, 74 V. For best four, we would add 10, 8 to the best three. By looking at the neutralization titers, the IC80 neutralization titers for these best two, three, and four antibody combinations, 
shown in this figure, we can see that the best three and four antibody combinations were significantly more potent than the best two antibody combination. However, the, there was little difference in the coverage between all three antibody combinations. The best three and four BNAP combinations were virtually, showed virtually identical performance using uh, the breadth potency plot. Most of the studies before us have focused only on breadth potency plots as measure of the potency of the antibody combinations, and they would have stopped here. However, we also wanted to look at other metrics which might be relevant for in vivo success. The first metric that we looked at uh, was coverage with multiple BNABs active. The reason we would like to use antibody combinations as opposed to single antibody uh, to prevent or treat HIV infections is that they might reduce the chance of viral escape by using multiple antibodies. Uh, for this effect to be seen, we would like a given virus to be neutralized potently by, all the, uh, by most of the antibodies in a given combination. When we looked at uh, the simultaneous neutralization of uh, antibodies in our best two, three, and four BNAB combinations, shown as heat maps over here, we found that for the best two BNAB combination, uh, around 50% were uh, potently neutralized by only one BNAB in the combination. This suggests that even though we would be giving a combination of two antibodies, it would effectively be a monotherapy for 50% of the panel viruses. To have two BNABs active for most viruses, we would like to go to at least three BNABs. And to have at least three BNABs active in the combination, we would need four BNAB combinations. These are shown by the heat maps here, where the viruses which were neutralized by one antibody are indicated by blue in this panel, and the viruses neutralized by two antibodies in the panel are shown by dark blue in this sub-figure. The next metric we looked at was incomplete neutralization. Single antibodies are known to show incomplete neutralization of pseudovirus sample, which is surprising because the viruses in this pseudovirus sample are genetically identical. This incomplete neutralization could possibly therefore arise from epigenetic variation, such as variation in the types of glycosylation profiles or uh, alternate loop configurations, which might be dynamically achieved by the envelope trimers on the viruses. Since we know that combinations give higher potency uh, in neutralization uh, than the single BNABs, we wanted to investigate whether they also afford any benefit in terms of incomplete neutralization. By looking at the experimental data, and we found that combinations do reduce the level of incomplete neutralization. Uh, this possibly arises because the subpopulations which are resistant to a given BNAB might be complementarity for the different BNABs in the combination. As shown here, we have predicted the level of neutralization at 10 micrograms per mil for single antibodies, two antibody combinations, three antibody combinations, and four antibody combinations. The, the incomplete neutralization are shown as fractions on the y-axis, and on the x-axis, we have ordered the viruses. In this figure, uh, we are showing the incomplete neutralization for, uh, observed for single antibodies from the clade C panel and the predicted incomplete neutralization values for two, three, and four BNAB combinations using the Bliss Hill model. As we can see, single antibodies show a fair number of viruses where we do not achieve complete neutralization. This effect is most strongly seen for V2 and V3 antibodies, where uh, more than 40% of viruses show less than 95% level neutralization at 10 micrograms per mil. When we move to two antibody combinations, we see that there is a reduced level of incomplete neutralization. However, there still is some level of new incomplete neutralization. Not surprisingly, this is strongest for the combination of V2 and V3 antibodies, which showed uh, respectively the highest and the second highest level of incomplete neutralization on their own. 
But surprisingly, when we go to three and four antibody combinations, we see virtually no incomplete neutralization, which suggests that combinations will uh, provide substantial benefit uh, in terms of incomplete neutralization, as well as uh, increasing the potency and breadth of, uh, over the single antibodies. Uh, let me conclude and raise some points for discussion. We have developed an accurate mathematical model to predict neutralization of BNAB combinations using data on individual BNABs. In, uh, in preparation is a web tool uh, called CombiNabber, which will be hosted at the Los Alamos HIV database, which will enable users to predict uh, and compare the best performing antibody combinations uh, for their panel of interest. Using this mathematical modeling, we then predicted neutralization profiles for all potential 2, 3, and 4 BNAB combinations for the clade C panel. And this allowed us to systematically compare uh, and find the best possible combinations. In addition to breadth and potency, we also looked at other metrics which might be uh, relevant for clinical success in different settings. So let me uh, d now discuss the questions which I started out. How many BNABs will be needed for clinical success? This question can be broken down into two scenarios. How many BNABs will be needed for effective prevention of HIV infections? Before I get into this, it should be noted that in addition to the neutralization properties which we have looked at, there are several other properties which might influence the in vivo success of antibody combinations, such as tolerance and pharmacokinetic profiles of different antibodies. The data on these is just becoming available as the first, clinical tri first human clinical trials are underway. However, these will be important parameters which our study did not touch on. But looking at just the neutralization properties of these antibody combinations, we can say that for prevention, breadth and completeness of neutralization shown by antibody combinations will be important. At 10 micrograms per mil, we found that the best 2 BNAB combination neutralizes 97% of, of this panel viruses at 80% level and 92% viruses at the 95% neutralization level, while the best 3 BNAB combination neutralizes virtually all viruses at all levels. So ideally, we would like to use 3 BNABs in the prevention setting because they offer complete uh, neutralization as well as uh, enhanced breadth. But practically speaking, two antibody combinations could also be comparable, and in particular the one which we identified, CAP256.VRC.26.25 plus VRC07523LS, might be a very good compromise. So next, uh, how many BNABs will be needed for therapy? Key for successful therapy will be to reduce the chance of viral escape. To achieve this, we will need neutralization of most viruses with two or three BNABs active in the combination. For this, we have seen that four BNAB combinations offer significantly higher coverage than two, our best two and three BNAB combinations. And therefore, for successful therapy, we predict four BNAB combinations might be needed. So with this, I'd like to thank my collaborators uh, listed here and my funding agencies, in particular the Comprehensive Antibody Vaccine Immune Monitoring Consortium, or CAVMC, uh, funded by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Thank you.